This video is brought to you by Astapro and Liquid IV. More on them after the reaction. Before we hop into the video, just wanted to remind y'all that Greg, Koizandra, Michael Tesla, and myself will be at WonderCon this Sunday, March 31st, 2 p.m. in room 207. Come say hey and check out our second annual panel. Citizens of the Reject Nation, you know who we are and you know what we're here to do. It is I, John, alongside Andrew John Blackthorn Gordon. How you doing, man? Are you excited for episode six? John, that was quite an introduction, and I am Yabushige. Oh, I finally said it. I knew the name. I just wanted to do it one time. I'm actually, I'm <laughs> I'm half sad and half excited. And why I say I'm half sad, because we're past the halfway point. I don't want to get there. I, I don't know. want this to end. It's okay. I, I just want to do like a million episodes. This show is so good. That's right. We but I'm excited. time travel back to 1600s feudal Japan <laughs> and live yes. out our days, Andrew. As long as my Mariko is there, I'm down. <laughs> sure enough, guys. That's my, that's my woman. Continue you leaving your thoughts down in the comments below really appreciate y'all just keeping us enlightened Seriously, throughout really this helps. experience yeah it's just a very nice way to engage with y'all very much appreciate it leave a like on the video don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell big thank yous to prepper for chopping these highlights down on such short notice it is a task we very much appreciate them for it if you want to see the complete shogun experience with everything that doesn't make these reaction highlight reels come on over to patreon.com slash the real rejects sync up with your own copy and enjoy the full experience alongside Andrew, myself, along with all the other shows that we have reaction highlights and watch alongs for. It is a blast over there as well. Teas like these are available at rejectnationshop.com if you'd like to support and, uh, you know, rock a little swag in the process. That's the place to do that. And finally, if you're in the Anaheim area, come visit us March 31st, Sunday, 2 p.m., Room 207, Wonder Con, Greg, Coy, Jandro, Michael Tesler, and myself will be there doing a panel. It's gonna be a blast, guys, so come say hey, and without further ado, let's watch the shoot! All right, boy. 22, oh, we're getting a flashback, yo, hey. Oh no. Oh boy. Nezuko. Oh wow. Yes. You're gonna love it here, kid. I like this humming music. Oh, I love it too. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh. Is this yeah? I was yeah, gonna say, is I, this the, the, the reckoning? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, man! Ha! <laughs> More like a nightmare. Oh, what a cope. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, that's quite a transition. Know your motivation for fighting now. <laughs> Not that we didn't before, but <laughs> to cut from that to this, it makes a lot of sense. Hmm? I'm pretty good with the bow staff. Damn, they do a really good job aging, making the characters look younger. Uh, yes, of course. Ouch. Yeah, he's got some way of showing it. It's like this does not feel like love. <laughs> How do you solve a problem like Mariko? Huh. Ignorance is bliss, I guess. God, there's so much in that line. Choose yeah. to look away from what you can't control. So much is happening. Mariko. Based off that alone. Oof. Sure. This is your entire life now. This is Damn. your vocation. 
That was quite an impactful flashback. Yeah, it's an interesting Oof. prologue. A couple key glimpses. Ladies of the Willow World. Factual, yes. You saved me. Go for three. Dang. Wow. He has decided to grant you a fief that will provide an annual salary of 600 kok. She's not misconstruing any words here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's reaction. <laughs> so made you his chief admiral <laughs> and general of the cannon regiment. Damn. Oh my god. So many people in this circle are livid right now. He didn't do this like to gain the he just was trying nah, to save this his life. It's all part of the plan, Drew. It's all part of the plan. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Wow, man. You're gonna be a lord in no time. God. Still, I'm I'm quite tense. <laughs> yeah, no, that devastation is insane. He gives by far the best reactions on the show. Not even close. <laughs> supposed to be my job. <laughs> What's that you said last time? <laughs> yeah, seriously, you're focused on the wrong things. But, but my rise to power and status. <sighs> hey, he's acting like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> what draft number are we on now? I wonder what changes each time. If I'm killed this specific way, here's where I want my assets to go. She's being in Latin? She praying in Latin? Oh. This is day our daily bread. That's ah. Beautiful. Lovely oh. shot, yeah. Amen. Amen. Whoa. The family that prays together stays together. I'm not sure that's how the saying goes. Oh, no. Huh. Alright, commit Sepikon then. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, I was going to say, what's the, the ramification of divorce in this culture? Yeah, after all the mental anguish I give her, I thought she'd be <laughs> grateful. Yeah. This guy needs to look in the mirror. Ooh. Quite cold himself. Oh, damn. He, he's picking up on it. Well, I, he's he's not that dense. I, he's got a little intellect in him. Okay. I love, that. Worse. I love that Toronaga, though, is sticking up for me. <laughs> that's you great. deserve it. Yeah, no, but that's great, though. It's great character development over the time and their relationship. <laughs> Grudging, sort of uneasy tolerance of each other. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that's hard for him to do. Please tell him I am sorry about what happened to his army. I must ask why he lavished me with the gift of his cannon regiment. Ooh. He asks if you refuse them. I'm unable to serve him in the way he wishes me to, so I wish to leave. Sure. If I were to remain in the Japans, I would formally ask again for the return of my ship. To be captain of my ship on your behalf. Sail! There are still ways I can disrupt his enemies. I could attack the Portuguese black ship at sea, harming trade to the ports controlled by his Catholic rivals on the council. I'm told their names are Kiyama and Ono. Oh. Thus stifling the flow of Portuguese Catholic yeah. wealth and its accompanying power, which will ultimately be brandished against him. <laughs> this is not in our Lord's interest. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, were you going to translate? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a oh, conflict for her. I mean... How friendly are they, really? Believe me, the Portuguese are neither here for the good of Japan nor Toro Nakasama. They are here to gain in the name of their god. Why do you cling to this? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is getting good. I mean, he ain't wrong. Oh, but you'll be thinking about it. Mm. Give you a little marriage counseling. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, he's <laughs> picking up on it too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah. Get your man in line. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> know anyone in particular? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. What are you doing, man? Okay. Is this a gift or, or a punishment? <laughs> Both? Yes. <laughs> well, at least she can't get in trouble with Buntaro for this. It's in order. <laughs> I guess so. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, poor bird. What? Ah. Let's go. Lady Ochiba is here to get shit done. Ah. Uh. Oh no. Fly, you fool. I understood that reference. It's from The Hobbit, right? Oh! oh. God, the beheadings really hit in the show. <laughs> and before you comment, I know it's from Fellowship of the Ring. Thank you. They were concerned. Well, sometimes people don't know my sarcastic humor. Ozaka well, Castle has been locked down. Yeah. Ishido claims there is a plot to kill the heir. And he's ordered. Oh, <laughs> enough. <laughs> he's ordered that no region shall be allowed to leave until they can elect a fifth member and sentence Toranaga to death. This campaign to eliminate Toranaga, it has accelerated since her return. That woman has no such power. I don't know about that. I would not underestimate her eminence. The eminence never listens to this guy. The only consort to give the Taiko an heir, Ooh. and she despises the church. The I only think the time has come for us to turn towards Toranaga as an ally. That man is a Minowara, Martin. <laughs> I've never understood this what he has on you. Let us pray that we can bring him to our side when this is done. This is going to be his downfall, never listening to his aid. God, and what if they come in now talking about a lying up? Oh, is this that same humming music that we heard in the flashback, right? Ah. That we were commented that we liked. Yeah, the song must have been passed down. <laughs> Transition oh. to flashback. Oh, okay. Damn. Oh. So y'all came up together to some degree. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, wait a minute. Oh, this is all clicking together in my head. Oh my god. I think uh, I think it is for me too. Never return. Oof. Run away. Let's see about that, yeah. Now you're the mother of the air, goddamn. The theater. Ooh. Oh, who gets chosen to be an actor in this? Well, they have open auditions. So. Uh, I hope they don't do some kind of a coup. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh no. Desperate men can be dangerous, John. Most dangerous. Woof. Like a puppet on a string, you hold on tight. <laughs> but see, you don't know what my plan really is. I shall really align myself with Toranaga. This is all a ruse. あわれなものじゃ。奥も沈むも宿命次第。流れに飲まれる恋しと変わる。Sure. Oh boy. Get to work. <笑>うーん。どう落ち葉の方と呼ばれる。女は生きておれば全てを失うやも知れぬ。じゃが全てを取り返すことも yeah, come out of the unseen unheard. Oof. God. Do they have a thing where like only guys could act or something? Is that like a mask of her face? I would imagine so. It's clearly supposed to be her, but yeah. Quite a performance, sir. Brava! Use the word great, but he's only good. If you were more in character, man. Yeah. See, it's just a show. It's let's okay. We don't need to go to the extremes here. Of course, we can't take care of it. I have passions too, but I'm not cutting my knees off. <laughs> I'm just an actor, dude. Yeah. What are you trying to get me into right now? Because she's putting on an act for you. Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Her eyes, man. It's going to be fun on rewatch, though. Definitely. Pick up all the subtle cues and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh. Ow. Oh, you've had a rough ride. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like how life works around here. Crimson sky. Where the sky shall become red with blood. Yeah, clue us in. Mm. This <laughs> all could have been void if he just would have taken that at first. <laughs> I guess. Oh, I guess they could have revolted against it too. I guess I can't say that. Nothing's easy in this scenario, but yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Prove yourself. Do I 
光天かイエス時の猶予がある今待ってるいとまがどこにあるのじゃ先祖代々の意向を取り返し将軍におなりくだされえい父は戦では負け知らず俺はわしが戦を先に仕掛けたことがないからじゃわしは将軍の位を望んだことなどない Good king never attacks first, but must almost be ready for it. <laughs> Back to square one. Although, I don't know, seems like Crimson Sky will be inevitable. What are you going to do? What else would she like to do? ですはい。There's plenty for you to translate here. <laughs> oh, it's the name of the episode. Oh, oh sweet m a d i l <laughs> well, we've seen John turn down so many courtesans before, but I guess that Mariko being there might shift him into okay. <laughs> I mean, he's like not a neutral third party, but certainly like a third party. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't mean anything, baby. You know I love you and you alone. Man, she wants to be the queen or some shit. This is a great honor you have received. Lady Kiku is the most coveted courtesan in Isu. It's not the honor so much as being unable to understand why in Christ's name I'm receiving it. <laughs> <laughs> Usually wives like me are not permitted to go through the gate. But in this case, a special exception has been made. So don't waste this opportunity. Does t o r n a g a s a m a n o Oh, he does. He ordered it. <laughs> There is nothing to know. We shall keep denying what we did. But yes, he, this was his idea. <laughs> Nobody has any clue about what we did. <laughs> <laughs> How private are we talking here? Oh, I don't like this. I don't trust this. <laughs> what do I say? Hi. Talashi is beautiful. Sonata wa utsukushi. Wait, was that the one who was trying to manipulate? It's、uh, Omi's girl. Yeah. Koe ni zonji masuru. Mariko sama ni mo. Kayo no basho ni hakobi itadaki. Yeah. Ho ho ho. It's interesting. They're able to make you feel awkward, hilarious, and touching at the same time. It is considered a rare art. Courtesans like you could only study it for years. It is symbolic, a ritual. You pour very well. <laughs> From the phallus to the chalice. No, I always have attractive women translating. Where、Why? I come from, h o w the t u t e s are neither this well presented nor as inquisitive. <laughs> 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 Does he? 
いかがでございますか Why not? She always knows what to say. <laughs> She knows how to smooth these.、Cool. Yes, of course. She knows how to smooth these moments over. So, you got the to call on Nani got me. Nani mo me ma senu, Nesama. Omae got me tail to call on him. I say, I want I, Naikarako so, Tascani atta no dato mo no de show. True, makes the heart grow fonder. Kikudona teaches her young apprentice about empty space and its symbols. What's something equally poetic I can say in return? She wishes to explain to you the meaning of the willow world. I'm listening. Most come here to escape from boredom or pain. They believe this place is about physical pleasure, it's about spiritual release. But it can be more. The people she meets wish for a different life or circumstance. They want to be any place other than where they are. Terry, respite. You're going to get spiritual awakenings here. I offer you relief from this and safety to create one perfect moment that you wish to inhabit completely. Whew, that is pillow talk. <laughs> Settle your eyes on what you desire. Oh. My unclothed form. Woof. Just as I am with nothing between us. What a shot. Fantastic cinematography. I ask you, be here now. <laughs> Meet me on the other side of the eightfold fence. Yeah, dude, be so careful right now. Ah! Oh no. Escape. Yeah. You are here to escape. Escape from pain. It's no here, no, it's 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 no, Yeah. Oh. Is John gonna God, be able to the, do it though? The torture. I mean, I'm sure they'll figure it out, but I, I feel so bad for her. Yeah. Especially with all the subtle back and forth of like, you know, nobody can see in here. If you want it dark, it can be dark. Like,、mm. but the restraint. I mean, he wants to, but he's also trying to be respectful and also. <laughs> Kind of wants to live.、Oh. Yeah, they both want to, man. Also, could be th- their lives if they do anything. I guess. Well, yeah, it's like I don't I don't fully trust the amount of privacy they claim. Well, I mean,、have. they said when they got in there, eyes will be watching them. Yeah, which is directly contrasting all the sentiments of like, this is a private, private. place nobody can see here. Also,、yeah. too, the town is kind of aware that they spend,、uh, even though she's his translator, spend a lot of time together. はい。And you? Too much. Oh. Okay, maybe I could be wrong that they're working together. Well, it's like who's. Who's really working with who is always a question. Yeah. Oh, what of it? All the above. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Very cunning and perceptive. <laughs> What's wrong with Buntaro? He's a very honorable, nice human being. 
ちょっと対抗様のお望みを Damn, oh, so okay. we need another regent. How soon is now? この俺の敵の正体が分かっておらぬのじゃ。何故私が通うの思いを虎永に抱くのか。それは私が安土城におった幼き頃に始まったのじゃ。あ、あ。これまでの長い年月。あの男の耳打ちを計り事を。は。確
And, uh, hey, big thank you to the folks who made this week's episode possible. Shout out to Astapro for sponsoring us. So some fun facts about me. I've been seeing an ENT the past couple of months. Got a CT scan done for my allergies, and right now I'm trying to find time to get deviated septum surgery. So like many of you, I am someone who's tried pretty much every nasal spray you can think of because I have difficulty breathing through my nose, which leads to day-to-day -day and sleeping problems on a consistent basis. So before agreeing to this, I wanted to try them out myself because this is a serious thing I deal with. They provided me with free samples. This is my second bottle. This is without a doubt the best nasal spray I have ever used. That's not some talking point. That's my very own personal testimony. Genuinely, for me, it's fantastic and lives up to how it's advertised. It's the fastest 24-hour over-the-counter solution available. It gets to work in just 30 minutes while other sprays take hours to kick in. It's also the only one out there that's steroid-free for 24-hour relief. Astapro has seriously changed the game for me, offering full prescription strength relief from nasal congestion, runny nose, and sneezing. The difference this makes is phenomenal. It's kind of insane how how this relief through my breathing and nostrils just kicks in and I'm back in action really fast. So if you're like me, battling with nasal allergies and looking for relief, get fast acting nasal allergy or symptom relief with Astapro. Go to astaproallergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go. It's faster with Astapro, bro. I saw that commercial. <laughs> Astapro, it's faster, bro. That's A-S-T-E-P-R-O allergy.com. Remember, use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Thank you again, Astapro, sincerely. All right, Reject Nation. So today I want to share something with you that has been a wonderful addition to my health and fitness journey that I discovered during the holidays, and that is Liquid IV's hydration multiplier. I'm down to my very last packet, and I'm freaking out, but it's okay. I got more in the mail. Now, a lot of you have been so kind to notice how I've been working on my physical health. Thank you for all the compliments. And one thing I learned is that proper hydration is absolutely crazy crucial, especially post-workout and pre-filming after post-workout. And my wife actually introduced me to this product, which is perfect because we not only care about quality, but a good taste and quality product. Whether it's after a sweaty workout or just after, you know, a good night out, you know what I'm saying? Efficient hydration and replenishing electrolytes is Key. You just feel better and it tastes fantastic. I can't emphasize that enough. Another thing that I'm always on the lookout for too is products that have zero sugar or zero sugar added because that's one of my main dietary restrictions throughout the week. And they, of course, got products that fit that description that also taste good too. So, yes, thank you so much. So, Liquid IV's hydration multiplier is, in summary, is they are a non GMO electrolyte drink that delivers hydration into your bloodstream faster and more efficient than water alone. But sometimes drinking a whole gallon is not always efficient, but in fact, it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. I'm also big on efficiency. Plus, it's packed with a lot of essential vitamins, and we know vitamins are good for the body. It's vegan, soy-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. You can customize the water amount to your taste. Again, perfect for post-night recovery, traveling, or just having a big night out. You know what I mean? No, I won't. So, if you want to boost your support for the channel and boost your hydration game, go to liquidiv.com and use promo code REJECTS at checkout. That's liquidiv.com, promo code REJECTS. And remember, Liquid IV, it's not a real IV, but it sure feels like it. So stay hydrated, stay healthy, and let's keep crushing those health and fitness goals together in the year 2024. Well, that was quite, quite a thick episode. What yeah. did you think, sir? Uh, as always, I just loved it again. Hardly any action, if really any at all. And yeah. uh, I love that we just got, what was uh, the title again? Uh, Ladies of the Willow. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, I, and I love that, you know, the, the whole thing was literally uh, on... Mariko and um, what's Och what what's her name again? Ochiba. Ochiba, yeah. yeah. And again, that's literally how the ladies of the Willow world. Yeah, and and it literally uh, start uh, starts on uh, you know the whole mo uh, the montage that flashback, which was extremely powerful, and I oh, like yeah. that that connection between the two. That was so fascinating. Uh, I was just so in, in, engulfed in that uh, relationship. I didn't realize that we were going there and uh, <laughs> just getting. You know, even I mean, again, I'm so invested in Mariko as it is, and obviously the the turmoil and the pain and the anguish she's gone through, and obviously what she, just everything she has to do in general with Bunta, uh, just the translating uh, for John Blackthorne, and how there's a forbidden relationship there with me, and then obviously you know uh, the mental anguish she's got to go through with Buntaro, uh, the services, and uh, you know the faith that she has in. Uh, with her religion and then obviously, uh, you know, her services to, to Toranaga. I mean, this is a very, uh, just fleshed out, incredible character. And now you got this incredible flashback and this relationship again, I'm like, damn, this is such a deep character. Um, yeah. and then seeing this relationship, 
uh, with, uh, sorry, what's, what's, what's her name? I will get all these names down one day. Uh, uh, Lady Ochiba. Ochiba, thank you so much. That was quite the reveal that her, her I mean, obviously we, we had been told from the previous episode that her father was, um, you know, the one that, that killed the, the, ty- the Tycho uh, from the previous, uh, you know, the previous Tycho before the last uh, one. Mariko's so, father. Mariko's father, him, correct. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, so we had been told that, but actually to see that it was uh, her father and that, and that they were, yeah, and that they were friends, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I didn't realize that. Now we're going to have a turmoil and that they were friends and now there's going to be, obviously there's bad blood between them, I would imagine. So, well, and for her to go from that to being the mother of the heir to the successor yeah, to is, is like a whole other kind of twist. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I know like the whole first half, I probably look, well, I mean, I often, I often look foolish in general, uh, but, uh, nah. you know, just, just saying like, oh yeah, her and Toronaga, they're in cahoots. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that because while Toronaga didn't actually, you know, kill him uh mariko's father did so um but he planned it and uh you know helped him do or that because she thinks he does yeah or did. that's what she thinks but uh obviously i'm curious to see what the resolve is with her and what her end game is although i have an idea but i've been very wrong but i love that this show always keeps me on my toes my predictability is very usually wrong which i love because everyone who knows me knows a big pet peeve of mine is I hate stuff that is predictable. It's just in uh, formula. Like, I hate it so much. And the show is the exact opposite of that. It's always got me on my toes. I'm like, I did not see that coming. That was one thing. I really did not see that coming with that. Uh, again, that relationship between the two of them and that flashback. That was um, incredible. I got so much more to say. Uh, what do you think of the episode? Yeah, no, I agree. It's always really gratifying when a show, any kind of, you know, story can grip you, yeah, with context and with just the the revealing of further information or further, you know, corners of the map we haven't quite trodden yet. <clears throat> and uh, and this show is is great at that. I mean, yeah, because you have and, and it's a lot to keep track of, certainly. And it makes me excited to go back and catch the finer points on a rewatch and see some of the greater nuances that underlie and underpin all these things, especially because, again, they do, you know, give you. The credit to pay attention and all that stuff, and 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 you're on such a kind of complicated chessboard, and uh, uh, despite all of that, I just feel so kind of steeped in the intrigue, the pain, and the sort of weird uh, resolve that rises out of some of these traumas, you know, because you're watching, uh, there are so many characters, especially the women on this show, who are sort of like forced to die and and be reborn almost as like a whole other person in order to cope and survive with you know this world that is set up it's, it's that thing she says at the end you know like uh, men go to war for various reasons but, but a woman is always at war and i mean you know that you can fight in the comments and unpack that in the in the modern sense but in a in a more you know in a grander sense i do think that that's a really sort of interesting theme to to lay down because of course i mean You've got someone like Lady Ochiba who is clearly, you know, making a play for power and making a play to pull the strings and, you know, perhaps land herself in, you know, like as the bearer of the air, you know, she's already got a certain she's already managed to like climb to a certain protected status or a certain, you know, uh, you know, status of, of great importance to everything. And so watching her really embrace and use that after seeing what we saw in the flashback and her kind of echoing that sentiment of like, turn your eyes away from, I can't remember the exact line, but you know, from things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of that at play across all of this because so much of what we've seen thus far, I thought back to the very first episode, it's like, you know, that guy couldn't control himself in the face of disrespect toward his lord, you know, in, in Toronaga. Um, and that's another, it's just a small, seemingly small thing that had grave consequences that is yeah. sort of, yeah, just born of like, you either got to go with this, this just seems like a, a place and time to live in where you have to have like so much restraint and foresight and control over your emotions. Uh, and you know, if, if men are subject to that in the ways that we have seen here thus far, it seems like the the women are subject to it in like a wholly more twisted way. And this is a, a you know show that's already given us a couple characters who are 
being kept alive as a means of punishment and torture in, in s at least, you know, one perspective or another, you know, Mariko and Fuji being, you know, the two I'm directly thinking of now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like having this, this, this setup where, you know, minus a couple places and a couple sort of situations, you know, it's mostly men calling the shots and, and, you know, lording over each other and, and, you know, bickering and doing the politics and all that yeah. stuff. And in this episode, I think especially we kind of get the glimpse into, you know, the ways in which, you know, a lot of these characters, a lot of the, 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 you know, female characters especially have to kind of navigate around that and use again, unspoken means to influence and or to you know grasp at power and then you think of like kiku like oh Absolutely. we don't Just really know that much about her even still yeah. and yet you know because we have her proximity to these other characters and stuff like that and with what we know about various other characters what we've seen them do in the present versus how they came up in the past everyone kind of you know keeping an eye on the throne because you know everything is up in the air right now it makes me all the more curious if we're going to get some kind of big reveal or some kind of revelation with yeah. Kiku as yeah. to what her plan is or what her motivations might be uh, yeah. beyond, you know, being uh, one yeah. of one of the willow, one of the, you know, blossoms uh, beneath, you know, the willow on the lake or, or whatever. However, they summed that up. Right. And it was interesting seeing like all three. I mean, obviously, there's so many th different things happening in this episode. Uh, so many different subplots that were just so well done. Yeah. But like having uh, the focus of those three characters mm -hmm. and then seeing like the different uh, like you have two characters who really crave power with uh, Ochiba and Kiku. And again, I, I'm very excited to see like what possibly the revelation is with Kiku and her backstory and all that too. Um, and then you have a character like Mariko who is just, so, I mean, again, Ochiba has had a lot of pain and anguish with what happened to her father. And obviously, I mean, to be, you know, there was that interesting line with her, too, with like, I, I looked fate in the in the eyes and scratched it or something. It was just, again, so many oh, interesting yeah. and wonderful lines of dialogue. I don't know where these incredible writers come up with these insane, amazing lines. Um, but it's just, again, interesting seeing how they're like working up the totem pole of power. And then Mariko is just such a woman of honor uh and just like her journey as well and then i really loved uh that scene with her and torinaga where he's like mm -hmm. he's like well why did my father like marry me off to a man like um buntaro and like yeah. you know and he's like you, uh you 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 haven't figured it out yet after uh. all these years like he like he was just setting you up like the his his mission is not yet over he's instilled that into he's you like set you up to carry on he, his mantle ex exactly and like that is just that's just incredible writing. It's just it's so layered and it's got so much emotional depth there, and like, well, it makes you think so many things. Yeah, because in her position, you're like, I didn't, I, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> but also, yeah. you know, I've had to carry the the weight of shame yeah. from you know the actions of my family before yeah, me and just absolutely. like, yeah, there's so many different things at play. Yeah. And I know we're going to see, uh, I would guess there's going to be some uh, theories in the comments. Like did, uh, John Blackthorne and Kiku, did they, uh, did they actually do they it? Consummate. Did they consummate? Uh, uh, it's my opinion. And again, we can get into arguments in the comment section. I do not believe they did. Uh, mm. I'm curious what your theory is on that because I mean, obviously we didn't see it. That is not always the case of, Oh, well, if we didn't see it, it didn't happen. But just the fact that he's turned down so many, uh, uh, courtesans. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. John's always uh -huh. making sure I say things right. Um, which I appreciate by the way. Thank, thank people you so love a grammarist. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. I appreciate Aww. it. Um, but uh, no, I mean, he's, he's turned down so many in the past and also too, like you can tell just, obviously we know how much like him and Mariko just care for each other and just how much, uh, you know how passionate they are towards each other, and obviously the the looks and and there was so much subtext into how uh, you know how the they were speaking towards uh, Kiku, <laughs> how they were talking towards each other, and then how they were hold kind of like just touching hands like before he walked in the room. In my opinion, there's no way they did anything, so I'd be shocked if they did, um, even with the words that were exchanged afterwards. So, um, but again, some uh, incredible lines of dialogue that were uh, when they were in that room, like, "Oh, we can turn the lights off and make it darker," or the shadow, wh whatever the lines were. Very was, interesting. Yeah, play of of negotiation across yeah. all this because and, you had the the initial 
haggling with the 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 miss the madam or, right, or whatever right. you call it the you know the head of the brothel yes uh you know and, and that back and forth to being like you know uh you know we'll charge you 500 because we're we're the best out there you know and it's right. like well i mean come on it's only for it's not for toranaga himself it's for his you know uh Atomoto. yeah it's for his hot it's for for you know a friend of his who he wants to honor a little bit so you know can we cut the pro- and, and then just the yeah the the insistence when they're there that there are no prying eyes that we can you know make it dark if you want it dark we can you know keep you in this you know fantasy place removed from everything else where you can kind of feel free to be at ease and be open and and express and indulge and whatever else but the, you're constantly sitting there wondering to yourself like but how secret is all of this really you know right. because i i got imagine that Maybe this fortress is impenetrable, so to speak, but you know who on the inside is paying attention, yeah, you know, f- and and where are those people taking this information? And if Kiku has you know as much ambition as it seems like she does, right. I have to imagine that yeah, I mean behind the scenes, there's probably a whole lot of talk that you know in again the you know transactional space doesn't get brought up to just the people passing through but i have to imagine that like you know there's a whole other life being lived behind the scenes here that we don't get to see um and two you know since it is sort of a crossroads point i would imagine uh you know you never know whose information is going to come through and fall into you know certain hands especially yeah. in a privileged and intimate situation such yeah. as this one uh so it's like fascinating to think about and to yeah and to watch yet another conversation between you know uh uh the engine between blackthorn Monaco, and someone she's translating f- between them for you know and like the the looks again like there's so many great things uh, across yeah. this show across the different subplots that are held in looks and body language and you're often left to wonder like okay what is really being said you know and then sometimes it's clear and other times you're like okay you know i can kind of see the wheels spinning under the surface but i can't quite tell what conclusion is being reached or whatever else yeah. and so like they're great at at orchestrating these situations that are so intimate, but that are also uneasy. And I think yeah. that's really, it takes a lot of finesse to do that. Absolutely. And, and amid a show that again, has so many different layers in terms of politics, culture, language, you know, uh, uh, various other, you know, sort of timeless clashes between the sexes and the classes and all sorts of stuff, you know, yeah. like it's, it's I continually uh, kind of tipping the hat to the construction yeah. and the, and just the uh, the you know mapping out of the events and and the emotionality for sure. Also, uh, one of my favorite parts of the show, as I've mentioned a few times, is the relationship between Tornaga and Blackthorn, and just yeah. seeing more of the development of that relationship. Uh, I just like him honoring him with some gifts just to say thank you for jumping in there to save me during the earthquake and the landslide. You jumped in there with no intention of getting anything back in return. You just yeah. jumped in there to save a life. And I appreciate that. Like, thank you so much. And I'm not going to give you exactly what you want, yeah, but, but, but I am going to reward, gonna you, reward for this. you. But again, I, I still, I love that relationship. I love all their interactions. I just, I find it so fascinating again. And, uh, I also think it's interesting too, just watching the actual politics of it too. Like, again, he's not doing it for politics. He's just, Hey, I appreciate what you're doing for me kind of thing. And then yeah. you're seeing his son and then you're seeing, um, God, I can't. Yeah, uh, Yabu, Yabu, Yabushige, Yabushige's nephew. Like you're seeing, like them getting very jealous that this barbarian uh, is uh, being lavished with gifts, and he's got a head of the con- command now, and all that. And it's just, well, it's, it's inter- like it defies logic too for them. It's yeah, like, it's like, hey, we've we've been here for years. We've paid our dues, and this and guy holding it down. And yeah, then this and guy this guy comes, comes in. in out of nowhere. Well, yeah, and I would equate it like for sports logic. It's where someone just like you've been like head of the team for like three or four years. You're like on the varsity. And then this freshman just comes in. It's like, wait, what the hell? We've been here for years. And this guy just comes in and it's like respect kind of thing. So, I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. So it's an interesting look, you know, a POV look from where, you know, their, their heads are at. But again, on the heels of the last episode where Yabushige was like, 
whose army are you trying to give me, Commander? And then this yeah. episode is like, it's not my army yeah, anymore. But, it, but again, <laughs> like that's not the threat. And I understand why. Like it's still great writing, but from their perspective, it's like <laughs> y'all focused on the wrong thing. Like mm. you got a way graver threat out there than worrying about a barbarian uh, getting some lavish gifts and having a command of something he doesn't even want. Oh, it's a wild card, though, too, you know, because yeah. it's like they they obviously can, you know, he's obviously garnered the favor of Toronaga, but course. they also have that barrier of culture and of understanding. Course. And so, yeah, like I don't in a breath blame them oh. for side eyeing and for being sort oh, of no, skeptical. I don't either. But also you can easily tell that there is, you know, the self-serving layers that we yeah. have become very familiar with here is they're both, you know, sort of upset that their vie yeah. for power has not worked out or at for least sure. their chess moves in this most recent round have not panned out in their favor so much. Absolutely. And before I get to the regents, which I definitely want to talk about, uh, I found it very fascinating. Um, Toronaga, as we know, he's a very in intelligent character. He, he plays chess while other people play checkers. Huh. Uh, he's... He's he, he could tell something's up with Marie, Mariko and John, and John Blackthorne. So sure. I found that fascinating to see where that's going to lead to. Because, I mean, at some point I have a feeling he's going to find out that something happened. But again, I feel I, like he no. like that's the again. Another great thing is to me that whole scene where he's talking to her to me that said, hey, I know here's an opportunity for you to accompany him, you know, as a translator sure, and, and she makes the, the choice to not accompany them into the quarters for, you know, the actual uh, act. Right. Uh, and so she cannot, you know, translate if he, you know, is, is talkative whilst pillowing or however he decided to put that. And so like, and, and it could be, you know, obviously it could be different, but but yeah, to me that conversation said like, hey, look, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Buntaro was just in here being like, hey, you know, I've tortured this woman forever, and there's just something softer and warmer and totally unreserved for me in the way she looks at that guy. So like, I yeah. feel like he's got to know. And no, for sure. And Toronaga, I thought that was fascinating too. That he asked, said, "Well, why don't you just divorce her then?" Too, I was like, I was not it's expecting like, is that, that even one. an option. Yeah, <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah, that was. And for line. which of you is that? An, is like, is it an option for you? And then she gets killed. Like, I don't know. I honestly don't know how that side of things works. And most, I feel like it's from my vantage. It seems like only very recently that like divorce has become like a common thing that isn't like gonna disgrace your entire standing in your yeah. in your community. Right. Uh, but right. yeah, like all the little things surrounding that, and even the summation of like. Again, uh, we see uh, there a lot of older shows obviously involve this aspect of society and brothels and, and courtesans and things like that. But this has been a fascinating glimpse into that because I think a lot of shows to pull from like a Game of Thrones or something like that, you know, you'll cut to the brothel and it'll be basically an excuse to just have like a bunch of naked actors on screen. And, and you know, you're doing something that feels like not inappropriate to like the time and place necessarily but often it strikes me as sort of like a yeah let's get our soft core scene going <laughs> uh whereas here you know i like that like yes we go to the brothel we we confront that certainly and there is the temptation there is the sort of rush of what that is but there's something like way spiritually and and in practice different about it that's just quite striking to me and and yeah like they're there's little uh, waxes of poetry back and forth about, you know, uh, uh, the ways in which you can kind of ascend to a different plane for a brief moment and leave all these various, you know, slings and arrows of life behind. And, you know, for for a perfect moment, you can synthesize with somebody and, and feel infinite. And just like stuff like that is is not usually the priority I am used to seeing out of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate that this show has just sort of come with that examination of like, even though I am sure that like the way they staff these establishments is probably problematic to understate it. Uh, at the same time, like the purpose and the philosophy is more interesting than just like the, the simple blunt transaction of it all. Um, so this is another thing that I'm glad that this show, you know, is, is you know, uh, approaching with a certain amount of 
uh, sophistication and uh, thoughtfulness uh, instead of just being like, yeah, let's take a break for a nude scene or something like that. See, I would have liked that more, but I mean, uh, also so, fun so cool. can be fun sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, right. You know, no, no, no. I've, don't, I've, I'm I not hurting it's, for it's, it. It's more deep and layered Here. than that. I totally agree with you. Uh, again, very fascinating. Great stuff with uh, having the actor, I believe his name was Ido. Uh, mm. making him the regent uh, it, for Tornaga. They replaced Tornaga yeah. with Ido. That was very interesting. And then you had that other regent. I'm not remembering his name at the moment. Uh, you and trade then, one for the other. Yeah, exactly. It's like, now we're One's back like, to hey, square one. I see what you're doing. You're trying to mess with the, the system yeah. here. You're trying to game the system right now. And again, just keeping me on my toes. Not expect like finally we got what we've been trying to do here for the last six episodes. Boom. Well, and that's a f another sort of fascinating way to show like yeah, even Ishido who in the first half of the show has felt like the antagonist or like the leader of the antagonists in a sense now feels at least as of these couple episodes certainly less effective or effectual mm -hmm. because he is bound by these protocols and these uh you know. Uh, is bound by ceremony and tradition and, and these agreements, this bureaucracy. Uh, and on the one hand, you're like, well, you know, perhaps we need some of that for society to be society. But at the same time, as Ochiba is, you know, making her maneuvers around, it seems mm -hmm. like she is looking to operate on a wholly other plane for which those kinds of machinations will almost be irrelevant at some point. Yeah. Um, so I'm, again, and fascinated to see what kind of fire that lights under the regions. Yeah. No, she's definitely uh, got some strings and some plans uh, that she's twisting around. But mm -hmm. uh, also, too, when we saw that that regent was trying to escape with his family, like, obviously yeah. that's what could have possibly happened to Toranaga had he not... You know, escaped in such a methodical way as he did in that one episode. So um, I'm glad, obviously, he got away, and that obviously sucks for that region who wanted yeah. to get away peacefully. Yeah. Um, also, too, again, them holding back on, I, I, I think, is a wise decision because we know with the Crimson uh, Sky, is that what they said, right? The Crimson yeah, Sky. Yeah. We that. know we've got some crazy action, I would imagine, either in the next couple episodes or in that final episode. I would imagine that's going to be some bombastic, go. psychotic, amazing action. Um, but that was an interesting transition, how like we saw that and then very next shot. They're all dead, and then you can see his fingers are missing. I was like, damn, they are just holding the back. The intimacy I, of yeah, the violence. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm like, I, I, I just have a feeling we're going to go, like, ape shit with the action because yeah. they are holding back like wait we we got something special planned for you guys yeah and i like that you know we've had these brushes with like oh shit war is definitely coming and and i feel like they're b mounting the tension nicely i didn't feel like i don't feel like thus far we've spun our wheels at all even though certainly the inevitable has been prolonged to some degree but that's mm. i think part of the tension is like watching as any moment this could all fall over and certain things happen and you, and you know when uh 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 what's his name uh Nagakado does the whole you know uh, attack on Jozen you know you expect Oof. one set of things to happen right. and certainly there are repercussions but it's not exactly what you yeah. expect so you know but part of me is is anticipating you know this mounting climax to be some kind of all out attack on Ozaka yeah. or something like that but uh, yeah, I mean, you don't bring up a prospect like that if we're not going to do some, oh, some for sure. serious for sure. you know, battle at some point. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I was just going to also say, too, in, in regards to Toranaga and Blackthorn, I found that in that conversation, too, they were talking about how the Portuguese only do things for profit. Yeah. That was a very, again, very fascinating conversation. And also, too, you could see that Mariko was getting very defensive because obviously she's got faith and She's religion religious and yeah. so like it, and then those guys were like maybe that, we should ally with Toronaga yeah, you know again, what I'm saying I believe can we scroll down just a little is yeah. it Alvivo is that his name Alvito Al sorry I, I really feel like that's going to be a major downfall for the guy who's ahead of him that yeah. I, I just he never ever takes his he's too he's, comfortable no, in his status no and I, yeah. I understand that but like you know it's it's not. It's not good to always just like be comfortable in your own status. Like it's. Uh, it's good to oh, take no, other yeah. people's uh, info and, uh, at face value and just like weigh the the pros and cons. You know what I mean? And Alvito like 
Whether you agree with him or disagree with him, he is cunning, as you say. Like, he's got some good info. I would, he just never listens to it. You might as well just not even have him there if you're never going to take his advice. Yeah. Uh, Like, at face value, he never listens to him. Like, this is clearly, again, great writing, but he's he's just going to be a a major downfall for him, never listening to this guy. I mean, he's given some sound advice so many different times. I'm like, I'm glad he's not listening because I mean clearly he's uh, we uh, you know we're meant to root against these guys but still it's like for now <laughs> yeah right right but still we'll it's see. like uh, it's it's just it's it's incredible to watch that uh, this guy just never listens to him but again like you said it makes sense because he's so uh, comfortable in his standing so but uh, again well, fascinating yeah. but also too uh, I just I thought it was interesting the tension where uh, Mariko got just so uncomfortable in the conversation because. Uh, and then again, that's where Tornaga was watching. Like, uh, why are you not translating? Like, what what's the arguing in the conversation yeah. here? That was again just this show does such a good job. Like, without actual action, like you really feel it the drama tension. in these. Yes, yeah. it's just it's not an easy thing to do with it's like lots of dramatic with di- tension. Yeah, with dialogue, it's a very difficult thing to do as a writer. So I just mm-hmm. absolutely praise to the show. I know we keep yeah. praising it, but. It's no, so it damn can, good. It continues to hold the bar of, yeah. of quality. And, and too, I thought it was even, I mean, obviously it served the, the plot story, but I, I thought yeah. it was cool, too, to spend some time, like, watching the, the I don't know if it's Kabuki <laughs> specifically. I'm sure there are more kinds of theatrical performance than just that. But watching that performance and then having that segue into, like, oh, hey, we can, you know, use you as a pawn in our little political game. Uh, I thought that was fascinating, too, because, again, you're watching... You know, a, a, a moment of, of it, it's again, it's like you're watching what by many accounts would be like a, a shared communal sort of leisure activity of sorts. But at the same time, everyone's a little tense because of the circumstances of like how we're all here and who feels like they're being kind of. Uh, politically imprisoned or not and also we're in the text of what is happening on stage like literally reviewing this traumatic piece of ancestral history it's it seemed like for Ochiba it seemed like they were recounting like actual events from her life or if not maybe I misunderstood and they're just things that you know echo very much her experiences but just even the layers on a scene like that uh, again, from just the the sheer cultural aspect to the in context yeah. aspects, or continually yeah. fascinating yeah, and, la- and beautiful. And final thing I want to say that yep. has no bearing on uh, the actual narration or acting or anything, which was all fantastic in this episode. I loved that humming music that we were yeah, hearing from uh, uh, in the flashback, and then also at present time we heard her son humming that same thing. So it's like a, a passed on thing uh, through generation to generation. I th- thought that was such a beautiful like harmony that we were just listening to i loved it yeah it beautiful it just i got the feels from it's it simple but striking oh yeah no i really like because you were talking about it and i like i was t- in my head i was like i'm loving this and then you <laughs> said yes exactly you were you were reading my mind uh but it was just again simple but beautiful and i just i felt it was another impactful incredible episode um yeah. i'm sad we only have four more but this is damn good television. 100%. It's uh, it's very good television. I very excited to watch. I Just let, let us know in the comments. Are you getting sick of this? Never. John Blackthorn. I hope you make it to the end, boy. Do you want to see an episode where I just do this accent only? Yes. Just let us know in the comments. This is a really solid impression, man. Oh, I, thank I, you. I admire thank you. I'm, I'm jealous. Pra- practice seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Well, that's it. <laughs> You're Mar- just going to live in this character. Mariko Mar- 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 helps me practice these lines. <laughs> I have so many questions, but uh, we'll save those for next week. We'll so, hop into your... Sounds good, too. Yes, I your method it. process. Ah, yes. I look forward to that next episode, John. Well, gang, who do you think's going to make the first move? <laughs> everyone's circling around, and everyone's got their knives at the ready. Who's What's going to pop off next week? Uh, aside from, d- don't actually spoil it if you've read the book or something, but, but you know, <laughs> leave your speculations and we will catch you uh, for episode seven. Cannot wait. Thank you guys again for just being so great along this journey, enlightening us, enjoying the show alongside us. It's been a real treat. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next week. Much love. Be well. 